Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over possibly the worst map I've ever played in my entire history of playing Call of Duty. The map I'm talking about, of course, is Dos Hoss. And there's a lot of similarities I find with this map and on shipment from Modern Warfare, but the difference is on shipment you actually have time to hide briefly to heal up. On this map, the spawns are literally scattered everywhere. I mean, I can spawn one second, be aiming down sights in the middle, and quickly have an enemy spawn right behind me and dome me in the head. <laughs> I do love that they tried to make this map fast-paced, but every time I get placed on this map, no one runs anything else other than SMGs, ARs, and riot shields. Oh, and shotguns. Don't forget the shotguns and pistols. Mix this with the fact that it loves to make enemies spawn in your spawn point within seconds of starting. Sometimes, you know, it, it just makes the map full of disaster. You know, I don't think I can remember a time that I would rage quit when I see a bad map loading up. But it wasn't ever as bad as I do now that this is the map that's being loaded up. I personally think that they took map voting out of this game because they know that nobody in their right mind would actually vote for this map unless they wanted to have the worst time ever. You know, sight lines everywhere. You can literally get domed just walking two feet after spawning. And of course, right here is where everyone loves to rush right where I died. They love to rush with shotguns. And it's so freaking annoying. I have to basically, to play this map, I have to basically camp, like hard camp, and I do not like camping at all, it's just, it's slow for me. This is supposed to be a fast paced map, but they made it so fast that you have to play it slow, and it's horrible, I, again, mixed with the bad spawn rates, you know, we'll get back to those here in a minute, but it's just horrible. You know, <laughs> they even took DOS Haas 24-7 out of this week's playlist. And the worst thing is, is I see people defending this map on Twitter. Some saying that they're getting us ready for shipment when, one, that map is not coming to a World War II setting. If it does, it makes no fucking sense. And then again, this is Call of Duty. It, nothing makes sense. But two, why on earth think that that would be any better? when it's actually a worse decision to bring that map into this game that not only gives us DOS Haas and Dome and now Shipment, three rushing maps. I don't mind rushing maps, but make the spawns fix. Like, just fix the spawns. You know, if you want to have rushing maps, make it to where enemies can't spawn right there in front of me. Like you just see one spawn right in front of my face. They're everywhere. Spawns are everywhere. Now, I get it that, oh, I am kind of in their spawn encampment right there, but again, it shouldn't spawn like two feet in spinning distance of me. I think the spawn system's worse on this one, but it's almost just as bad on the map dome in this game. Like, trust me, it's horrible. It really is. But... You know, I'm mind blown by the amount of people wanting to defend DOS Hoss because they want to get their pistols and shotguns done. Look, the camo suck. The camo challenges suck. They've been the same since Black Ops 2. They haven't changed. They may add one or two different new, you know, oh hey, get mounted kills or whatever like that. I don't know if that's in this game. I knew it was in Ghost or something, but... The thing is, on top of that, you die constantly on this map. If you just move like two fucking feet, you die. The spawn system is so broken. I, I think I can actually say Black Ops 1 Nuketown, the spawns are better than in that map and that game than it is in this game. I never thought I'd say that because Black Ops 1 Nuketown sucked ass. It really did. Sledgehammer Games needs to fix the, sp fix the spawns in this game. 
because I was so tired of, you know, being on a street just for the an, an enemy to spawn right behind my face, and I can't react quick enough to kill them, and then I die. You know, I these aren't the score streaks. These are kill streaks. The big difference that I see people asking me who may not play Call of Duty a whole lot, or if you're just now getting into Call of Duty, score streaks, they add, each little score adds to your score streak. Hence the name score streak. You know, the more score you get, uh, if you're using a UAV or a counter UAV or stuff like that, or spy plane, stuff like that, all those little points, along with capturing tags and capturing objectives, all that goes towards your score streak. In this game, you have a kill streak. It makes it to where nobody, and I'm going to add another game after this because that game was way too quick, but it, it makes it to where nobody wants to play the objective. It has it drives no incentive to people to play the objective because they want to get kills. They want to get a streak going. They want to see what's the highest streak they can get. And you know, I don't blame them, but kill streaks offer no incentive to play the objectives. You might as well just keep if you want to have kill streaks, allow an option for score streaks for when a you know an objective based game mode comes up. And it, it, it forces you to play with the score streak because it forces people to play the objective. Because not only do kills go towards their score streaks, but so do all the other stuff, such as capturing objectives and picking up tags and stuff like that, all that kind of stuff. And then when you play a game like TDM where there is no score streaks to pick up or, you know, no objective, but to just kill the people, then offer kill streaks. I see no problem with that, but you know, that's just my opinion. If they really want to have kill streaks in this game, you know, it drives no incentive to play objective based game modes. And it's almost made me to where I just want to play TDM because as much as I love kill confirm, it my teammates don't want to pick up the tags. So it's horrible. <laughs> you know, it, it's just I'm I'm really losing hope, really, because recently Battlefield 2042 came out, and or it came it released early and everything, and people are saying that that game is really bad as well. It released unfinished. Uh, there's bugs as out of hell. Now I still see people defend Battlefield and saying that it's not as bad as Call of Duty Vanguard, and while it may be true, it's still released unfinished. Okay, but it, Halo Infinite released yesterday. I'm holding out on that game. I think multiplayer is free, so, you know, don't quote me on that. I don't know if it is or not. I just heard rumors of it being free. I'm going to have to check it out, but if it is, then hell, I might just be playing that for a little bit as well. But, you know, fingers crossed the Halo Infinite is good because with Battlefield 2042 being released broken along with Vanguard, it seems like Halo is literally our last hope at this point for first-person shooters. You know, coming from a consumer standpoint, doing what these developers are doing, releasing games unfinished, is wrong. And it's a scummy tactic for companies to do this to their loyal player base. You know, maybe it's just me, but I think we really need the devs to sit down and listen to what their loyal player base wants. Not the little kids that want to play a rated M for mature game that they shouldn't even be playing because it's fucking rated M. But I digress. I know I said that I played Call of Duty World at War and, you know, while I'm 24 years old now, yeah, that makes me one of those people who played the game before I was mature enough. But the thing is... I did. I I learned to adapt to those games as they were. I didn't sit there and bitch to companies that there was no battle royale or crap like that. If I wanted to play that, I loaded up a different game. These developers are wanting to reach out to younger and younger audiences while keeping their game rated and for mature. And I'm sorry, back in the early 2000s, yeah, I know times have changed. But the thing is, maybe we should go back to early 2000s where. If a parent caught their kid walk playing a rated M for mature game, they they would have get slapped. They would get 
grounded. They would have been punished in some kind of way. I don't know. You know, developers need to really sit there and, you know, reach out to find out what their loyal player base wants. Players of age, 17 and up people. I know that might piss off some people, but 17 and up. But, you know, there's an ESRB rating on there for a reason. And it seems like as time goes by, you know, parents have become lenient on the stuff. And when parents have become lenient, the developers have become lenient. Saying, yeah, we'll listen to the kids. Why are you listening to a kid for your rated immature game? If a parent wants to let their parent, their kid play the game, fine. That's their priority, all right? That's their problem. But why listen to the kids? You're a developer. You're a triple-A company uh, listening to a kid tell you how to run your rated immature game that they probably shouldn't even be playing. Why don't you listen to the older audience that's able to play your game, that has played your game for years? I mean, it makes no sense. The thing is, yes, while I did play it while I was younger, I, again, I didn't pitch a fit because it didn't suit me. Yeah, I died a lot. I learned to play better because of that. I got better because of that. And while this may say, well, you suffer, now the kids have to suffer too, that's wrong. Look, they will get better as time goes on the more they play. That's the thing. It takes time. You have to learn these things. Even as a full-grown adult while playing these games, I still suck on new games because I still have to learn the maps. That's the thing. You've got to learn the maps. you got to learn how your player base plays. you got to learn how your enemy moves around and moves around these maps. And you got to learn... You know, ways to flank your enemy. That's how you learn to play these games. Not by saying, hey, we need higher and stricter skill-based matchmaking because I can't get my final kill streak. It makes no sense. You know, again, what you're seeing right now is older gameplay. And right now, as of currently right now, not in this gameplay, but I've already hit Prestige 1 like level 14 or something and i'll have more gameplay of that coming soon i just had a bunch of gameplay that i had recorded and i'm wanting to get that out um but you're gonna see that these little patches that they put in with these games it didn't make the game any better and if anything it it made it worse and if i get on dos Hoss, i literally will rage quit you know the topic of this video was the worst map ever i think Dossos tops every map that it's ever played as being the worst map ever. Lines of sight everywhere. There's just no incentive to run two feet because you know you're going to just get domed by some kid running around with a shotgun or some camper uh, hiding in a corner with, you know, his shotgun or pistol because that's all they run in this map. And, you know, the thing is, is I would say I'm running out of time, but no, we have to vote for the team MVP, which again, I think this is the stupidest fucking thing they put in the game. They should have just left it as it is. The person who's the MVP has the highest score at the end of the game. Like, I debated skipping through and just fast forwarding through this, but, you know, it, it requires no incentive to just do it. it. It's, I'm mind boggled. That's all I'm doing. I'm mind boggled, and there's still people who want to defend Dossos. So, you know, that's that's that. But I'm out of time, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, and peace. Also, thank you guys so much for 1,000 views channel-wide. I never thought I'd get 1,000 on anything, but... Thank you guys so much. I really couldn't have done it without you guys. So I hope you guys continue to enjoy the content I put out. And I hope you guys continue to help support me. Let's see if we can get to 100 followers by the end of the year. That's our next goal. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.